Since the 1960s, Chinook salmon have become an important piece of the puzzle that is the $7 billion per year Great Lakes fishery. But the story doesn't start here. Chinook salmon were introduced to the Great Lakes in the 1960s thanks to eggs from salmon in their home range of the Pacific Northwest. To supplement wild populations, the Michigan Department of Natural Resources maintains a salmon rearing program in our state fish hatcheries. In their native habitat, they are anadromous, migrating from rivers to the Pacific Ocean and back. In Michigan, Chinook salmon are patadromous, meaning they travel from rivers to a great lake and then return to their natal rivers as adults, where they then spawn and die. This marks the end of their life cycle. The DNR maintains weirs around the state, which are used to block the upstream migration of fish. The Little Manistee River Weir, located on the river that bears its name, is the main egg take location for Chinook salmon in the state of Michigan. The adult fish are diverted up a fish ladder and into holding ponds where they mature prior to spawning. Staff gather each October to spawn the Chinook. Fish are mechanically crowded into a building and humanely euthanized. Once euthanized, they are checked for ripeness, sorted by sex, and placed in a disinfectant bath of iodine to remove any external pathogens. Fisheries staff make every effort to only spawn wild fish. Those with missing adipose fins are hatchery-reared fish and will not be spawned. Females are then stripped of their eggs, while males are stripped of their milt, or sperm. The 4,000 to 5,000 eggs from one female are fertilized with milt from one male. The fish go through a disease inspection and are then placed in bins for human consumption and pet food. All parts of the fish are harvested and used. No portion is wasted. After the eggs have been fertilized, they are placed in a water bath containing thiamine for a period of one hour. Chinook salmon feed almost exclusively on alewife, which lowers the thiamine level in the salmon. Egg batches are then mixed into five gallon buckets where fresh, clean water provides oxygen. Eggs are disinfected one more time with an iodine solution and then transported back to a state fish hatchery. At the hatchery, green eggs are placed in incubation trays. Water is constantly circulated through every tray, each of which houses 7,500 eggs. Eggs hatch in approximately 45 days and begin living off their yolk sac. At this stage, they are called sac fry or alvin. Upon absorbing their yolk sac during their first month, called buttoning up, the Chinook are transferred to larger tanks as swim-up fry. In these tanks, they are provided all their needs of life, including food, water, and shelter. As the young Chinook salmon grow over the winter, their markings become more complex, and they become adept at feeding. At this stage, they are called par. As the par get bigger, they start to lose their camouflage markings and take on a more silvery appearance, which is called smolting. This is the stage where state fish hatcheries begin stocking the fish into rivers around Michigan. Fish are weighed and pumped into stocking trucks, driven to their assigned site, and then released into the water. Some are transferred into holding pens to be fed a little longer, and then they are released. These fish, now with a solid silvery appearance, are called smolts. They will imprint on their natal stream and forage for food. As they grow larger, they will make their way downstream to one of the Great Lakes, where they will live for the next couple years. While in the lake, they consume alewives and other fish swimming in the middle of the water column. They can gain up to 30 pounds in those few years while reaching maturity. Once mature, they will make their way back to their natal stream in the late summer and early fall. This is a great time for anglers to focus on catching a Chinook salmon, either from a boat in the lake or in the stream as they migrate to spawning locations. Once in their natal stream, Chinook salmon migrate until they find the perfect spawning habitat. Females then make a red, or a nest, in the gravel. After spawning, they will die and become part of the river's nutrient cycle, with their young starting the whole process over again. For more information, visit michigan.gov slash SIC.